and you want to work on tools and strategies on exactly what to do and exactly what to say at the phase of relationship that you're in now. I'm going to tell you about a woman whose heart is sunshine, whose body burned hot. I'm going to tell you about a woman whose cold is tundra with some frozen eyes. I can tell by the way she moves. Welcome to the C-Note Show, everyone, brought to you by Great Men Move Mountains. It's 11.01 here, Monday, July 13th, 2020. And gentlemen, you are here. You originally came to this work because like me, you heard, I love you, but I'm not in love with you, or I want a divorce, or maybe we should think about divorce, or I want space, or I want separation, or something, <laughs> something along those lines that aren't funny, but when you look back at it now, five years later... You know, I'm so grateful that I went through that process to be where I am now. And that's what you're hoping is that there's light at the other end of this journey. There's light, you know, at the other end of the tunnel. And you're here because you want to learn how to be an amazing man in relationship. You want to understand what we talk about, the three forms of confidence. And you want to work on tools and strategies on exactly what to do and exactly what to say at the phase of relationship that you're in now. Maybe she said yesterday she wants a divorce or you're three months in or you're six months into doing this work or like the gentleman that's going to ask our question on the show today, he got a this surprise scenario come up, Cynthia, of she turned around and said, well, if you uh, commit to the relationship, there's always a chance. And she kind of gave him this opening to think that there's a chance in the relationship. And so we'll talk about that today. And our theme of this week is how and when to ask for more affection within your relationship. We had the prelude to that last week on our Friday show, and we decided, we said we would talk about that this week, so that's our theme of this week. And the only woman allowed on this show is Miss Cynthia Cruz. She's my partner in crime, my professional uh, co-host. We're both professional coaches. We've been in private practice for four years, and Cynthia is my fiance as well. Welcome to the show, Cynthia. Hey, thank you. Thank yeah. you for inviting me into this space every day. It truly matters. It truly matters to me. I um, am in true honor to get to know each of you more and hear your story and hear and understand what this incredible energy of masculinity is that you all model. So thank you so much for having me. And I am so looking forward to this week with you. Yeah. Love you guys so much. We're like we said, we're back in town. We were traveling in northwestern Wyoming to see Yellowstone and Old Faithful. And we went up into southern Montana and stayed at a beautiful cabin on the river there, Yellowstone River. It was absolutely gorgeous. But yeah, welcome to the show, guys. We always start with some comedy, uh, a post from the forum. And then we dive into the shit and we get tools and perspective and a plan on what to do, how to be that hero in your own life and how to be the man of her dreams, like we say. We are here for you. You are a man starting to rise in the world. You are the same man, maybe in body as you were yesterday, but hopefully not in heart or in spirit. That's why you're here. Or maybe you're, <laughs> maybe you're working out in your garage like our uh, regular Ruben is. He's always grunting in his garage. And I told him, <laughs> Ruben, this morning I was grunting in my garage too. And he said, yeah, everybody's grunting, thinking of me, Jeff. Everyone's, th <laughs> everyone's grunting in their garage, thinking of me. <laughs> So I'll start us with a post from the forum, and then we'll jump into some comedy. Our comedy today is going to be uh, that all baristas are hot. All men love baristas, Cynthia. I don't know if you knew this. It's a secret. Did Does you, it matter if I you... have coffee that I made? Does I that count? <laughs> well, well, well. So here we do our daily work as men. I love this picture of a lion because we face the world. We face the morning and face the day here on our C-Note show. Here we do our daily work. The theme of this week, and I love Cynthia's picture that she found here when and how to ask for more affection, either from yourself or within relationship. And I'll say from yourself as well, because we forget that a lot, guys, is you have to ask for affection from yourself. Here's our Morning Kingly plan that we talk about, our three forms of confidence we talk about almost every single day in the show. Here's some amazing posts over the weekend that I, we wanted to highlight. So this poster says, man, I got to say separation during COVID is a fucking surreal place. Been working from home for three months now. At least I have work, and that's a blessing. But I don't go out, don't see anyone, don't think I felt this lonely ever. And loneliness is a huge thing that we have to face sometimes, guys, within this journey and this process. So response is, you've got 100 plus guys in some very similar and even worse positions, and you've got your job. Tough times all around, but a great time to practice and find gratitude and opportunity in every moment. Happy to grab a virtual beer and a chat anytime. I love how you guys are supporting each other in the forum. That's 
So one thing that I found in 2015 was a local men's group. And I had never heard of such a thing before. I didn't know what a men's group was. I didn't know what we were going to talk about. And I was fortunate enough to have one within my town about 45 minutes from where I live now. And that's a huge reason that we do this show now. It's a huge, huge reason I wanted to launch this show with Cynthia for her feminine perspective. And so guys can have a private chat with each other over, you know, when you're live here on the show, or you can be on the private Facebook forum, right? Or we can connect in different events. Uh, Sven Masterson has a get together in September that's going to happen in the Poconos in Pennsylvania. There's another gentleman, Steve Wincoop, who does a get together in Idaho a lot of the time, a lot of years in uh, just across from Spokane, Washington, and Idaho. And both of those are just to get yourself there. Those aren't a uh, formal men's group. So yeah, Cynthia, I'd love for you to jump in. Uh, what are you excited about as far as our travels over this last week and our travels upcoming of being able to do this around the world? So what was exciting for you to be in a different space, bringing this show to the men in terms of your pride around allowing and, and honoring these men as far as a group so we can get together, right? So you're, you're a muse, you're a feminine way to usher in some different perspective. What was it like for you to do this on the road last week, please? Oh my gosh. It was, it was just, it was a gift, I think. Um, I mean, all of us in relationship are looking always to have like fresh eyes and new perspective. And when I think of like feminine energy, that's the kind of, that's what makes her like blossom is being seen with fresh eyes and creativity and newness and differentness and variety. And so getting to do this on the road and practice, practice that go, okay, what's, what's in the environment? Oh, it's a snow capped mountain in the distance. What does that inspire in me? How does that help me connect to you? How does that help me connect to this incredible tribe of men? Um, it, it's the mountain, it's the river that to me was the biggest gift. And then to just to be in a place where we were moving, but the tribe was solid and everyone's all over the world, but yet the tribe is solid and still, and the energy was there supporting men on the forum. Um, no matter where people were in the world was incredible, totally incredible. Yeah. On, honoring each other all around the world is something that I'm so happy to, to bring. And you, like our, our daily show is growing. You guys are growing and this is for you. You know, we are, feel honored to usher this in and it was so fun, so fun to do on the road last week. Absolutely. So let me jump back to some more posts here. Another response was, there are jokes about everything else, but there are no jokes about loneliness. You've reached out to the tribe and found that you're not alone, at, that others know and understand the trials of your journey. And, as the, and they travel the same path. You are in lockdown and required to stay at home, or is it staying at home is a choice? So that's a question. So the staying at home is a choice. I think uh, in any moments, so I've been studying a lot of Stoicism recently, Marcus Aurelius and Seneca and things like this that started with uh, Socrates and Plato. So Marcus Aurelius ruled from about 160 to 175 AD and Socrates was like 400 BC, came five to 600 years before Marcus Aurelius. And Sto that's where Stoicism, the Hellenistic view of Western society of truth and justice came from. And Marcus Aurelius, we still study today, right? So there's, there's books about that. I, ha I could recommend an audio book. I found a great narrator for that as well for his book, Meditations. And even then, he talks about honoring the moments and what's the beauty within the moment that we can recognize. And he talked about the snow-capped mountains and the travel. And so these responses here, we, wa we wanted to highlight this on a Monday today, is that we have each other all over the world, no matter where we are. There's you know, gentleman here from New Zealand, Patrick's always on. He's got perfect attendance every day. It's 5 a.m. in the morning when he's on the show, guys. Like, he's always there for everyone. He sends me videos. Patrick's an amazing man. So, for instance, him as an example, if you haven't reached out to him, you know, you're missing out. Like, have a virtual beer, like this response said. Like, you were here for each other. And I wish I would have had this every single day back in 2015. 
And I had it once every two weeks in my local men's group that I had to drive to, right? But now we've got it every day around the world, Monday through Friday. That's why we're so happy to bring this to you guys and you can connect with each other. And we've got, you know, we've got our curriculum that we talk about. So good. So let me actually pause there. I'm going to jump into this comedy for today of baristas are hot. Baristas are hot, Cynthia. I'm not sure. We're going to share right now and you're getting it behind the scenes. Here we go. <laughs> ah, oh, Mark. As your best man, it is my duty to make sure that this bachelor party is crazy. <laughs> which is why I got you. What can I get for you? A barista. Oh! Do not tell Lauren, please. Yeah, baby, I want to project my dream girl all over you. She is so hot. <laughs> In the context of my local cafe. You think I should go talk to her? Yes. <laughs> Hi, how's it going? Um, can I have a coffee, please? Coffee? Come on, you wouldn't ask Picasso to paint your shingles. Give me something to work with. Oh, something to work with. I can't tell if she's flirting with me or not. You'll never be able to. It's always me. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'll have, a, I'll have a latte then. Hi. Uh, don't you need my name or? I remember you from last time. Oh, nice, nice, nice. Whoa, whoa. Straight up, this is my favorite band. You guys have so much in common. Oh, oh yeah, dude. It's so weird how we just keep making eye contact. Oh! She's just here to put herself through grad school. Dude, I hope you're ready to get your lap warm. My, my new, my... No! Oh, no. Yeah. I like your shirt. Zombies are so cool. Oh, yeah. I don't normally believe in fate, except with baristas. <laughs> she is being way nicer than a cute girl usually would be. Yeah, and I bet you it has nothing to do with the fact that she works in the service industry. No, you no, come on. should ask her out. Yes! yes. yes. You're not yes. gonna ask yes. her out. What's the worst that could happen? You get humiliated and you can't come back to this cafe? All right, yeah. That's a risk I'm willing to take. <laughs> That's my boy. Yeah. Get after. You take the risk. She let me down gently. She has a boyfriend. <laughs> oh, <my>. Yeah. <laughs> it's too easy. <laughs> oh, baristas. Ouch. Baristas are so hot. Baristas are so hot. The silent. <laughs> So I love to like, oh, work on your screenplay. Oh my God, can't tell if she's flirting with me. Yeah, so take another drink of your coffee, Cynthia. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I'm supposed to be drinking the coffee, I think. I think I got it confused there, I don't know. So did you know that guys think breezes are so hot and that we don't know if they're flirting with us? <laughs> I did not know that. <laughs> oh, well, well, now you know. <laughs> Tim like that one. I, don't know. I can only see a few. Uh, yeah, Chris is smiling too. I can only see a few guys' picture. A few guys' pictures. Nice. Yeah, it's like I can't tell in the context of the coffee house. God, love you guys so much. Uh, I've got another post from the forum that is a, is more positivity as well, coming about support with guys. But I want to jump into uh, our man who wanted to come on and highlight his question for the day, and so. If you want to go and come on and ask your question, it was a surprise. You told you told us before the show you wanted to come on and ask this question, and your your separated wife, right? Yes. Hey, Jeff. Yeah. Um, yeah, go for it, Rob. Please. Yeah. So we've been uh, living together, separated as roommates since March, um, and she has wanted the divorce pretty much since March, and hasn't really said anything otherwise since then. Uh, we've been more cordial with each other recently. And in the next two weeks, I was planning to just move move out. And I've been kind of getting myself in the mindset of just moving on and continuing on with life. So when I brought this up, I was a little surprised because so yesterday we were kind of sitting together outside and we were actually spending some quality time outside and she was being cordial with me and uh, I was feeling a little bit anxious just because I'm moving out in two weeks and she asked is there anything I can do for you like I see you're down and I said well I'm, I'm anxious uh, and just in two weeks um, I'm moving out and I feel like 
we can still work on things and we can make this work. And her answer was, well, there's still always a chance. I just need to see if you're, that you're fully committed to me and the relationship. And then later on at night, she actually made a comment. She's like, oh, well, if, if you're trying to win me back, then you can do this or such and such, just kind of joking about it, which she hasn't really brought up in a long time. So it, it was kind of a little bit out of the blue for her to say that and and for me to hear that come out of her because she's been so adamant about that there's really no chance that we could ever work or that anything would continue between us. So, yeah. So thanks for asking. That's a great question, Rob. I mean, it's, it's almost like you've been probably crossing your fingers for a long time to hear her say something like this. And then all of a sudden it's a surprise right when you're about to move out. Right. Right. Yeah. So let me ask you, why would she say, you know, give me a little bit of background, give us 30 seconds or a minute of background on that you're committed to the relationship. Did she not feel that you were committed before or what was the um, She felt like at times I would like during our relationship, I just kind of go into my work too much. And there was also issues that came up between my family and her. And she thought at times I didn't fully support her mm -hmm. side and stand up for her enough. So I think that's what she means by saying that is that I'll, fully stand up for her, be there for her, and um, fully committed to us and not try and really be the nice guy, and which I've been in the past. Yeah, there's <laughs> there are a lot of experts that talk about, and, and I didn't know this either before doing this work, Rob, there's a lot of experts that talk about if you don't fully stand up for your wife, that it's a betrayal in the face of her and your family. It's a betrayal of the differentiation between you and your mother. Like she right. wants to know that you've broken from your mother and are going to support her. Um, and that we may, we make that mistake all the time. We're, we're kind of caught in the middle and then it, it comes across as like, we're not supporting her. Right. Even though that that's not what you intended. Right. Yeah. So, you know, let me ask what, what have you been doing for your own work, Rob? I know you've been on the show, you've been doing your work for you know quite a long time. Right. And I don't know how many books you've read that kind of thing, but how do you feel that you are different? We're going to answer your question. But how do you right. feel that you are different as a man? You know, not not just reactionary to what she now said or what she's kind of teased in front of you, half joking about. Right? We're going to answer your question, but how are you different? Tell us what you've been doing as a man for your own self. So I've been reading tons of books, watching tons of YouTube videos, this show. Um, I've reconnected with a lot of old friends for myself that that I've lost a lot of touch with over the years. Um, and reaching out to uh, people from from this forum, from the round table, um, and being more vulnerable because I always had an issue with talking about my feelings and being more vulnerable. So that's really the work I was doing. And I think that might be what made her be off guard because I've never really talked about my feelings. So for me to just say, oh, I'm anxious because of, Right. this or so-and-so I think because after that then she said oh I know you're part of these men's groups now and you're I know you're doing the work I see it um so I think she does see that I'm <laughs> finally doing things I think for her she thinks that it was too little too late which is why she's just been fully on the divorce um in her in her mind um so that's that's kind of what I've been doing for myself, going out on walks, running, uh, doing your kingly plan, meditation. This morning I went for a run and started the seven days of calm uh, meditation. So nice. you know, I, I see what I need to do for myself. And I'm not sure why two years ago I didn't start that, but <laughs> that's <laughs> well, yeah. a good point. Yeah, I'm going to bounce to Cynthia here in a second. But I mean, Rob, we all came to this because we had one strategy in life. And we were really going in at that strategy as a man who we are. And we learned that from our family and all our other influences. And we generally don't change until that strategy crashes and, bur <laughs> crashes and burns. Right. So that's when we wake up to this work. So I understand that. Um, I love what you said about that you were vulnerable with her and just shared your true emotions in the moment. So Cynthia, give Rob some feedback on his current energy right now. How is that hitting you? 
And so, Rob, I'm going to ask you in a minute if you have a specific question because you're in a big scenario, right? But I want right. love for Cynthia to, for you to please give him feedback on his current energy and where he's at right now. Yeah, well, yeah. thank you, Rob. Thank you just for being here on the show and then for sharing yourself here for other men and, and for your for your question. I guess I was wondering, um, how are you, like, so you were in this kind of one track frame of like, I know we're, we're not going to be together and I'm doing my life, I'm doing my thing. And then she kind of throws in this like, well, well, what about? <laughs> and I'm wondering right. what's, how do you feel different um, if you, you were in your one track and now that she's kind of opened the door, is that a, is that a exciting thing to you? Do you feel like very grounded in who you are and what you want? Does it feel a, like, for me, very in a human place, that would feel a little like off-putting, like I had one vision in my mind and now it, it might change? Yeah, that, that's definitely, I think, how I feel now because I was getting pretty much in the mindset of moving on and this is the best decision for both of us and there's a reason that we're not working out. So even though I was living together, I was more just doing my own thing and staying away from her. Our finances have been separated for so long. It's kind of, we've been living two separate lives. Sometimes we go somewhere in the car together, but besides that, it was really her living her life and me living my life. So it's getting ready to move out and move on and just, get on with my life and trying to really picture myself for the future and and to get in the mindset that if she's going to join me or not it's that she can do what she wants but I'm in the mindset of moving on and if she wants to join me then that's good and if not then I'll be okay as much as I as much as I can and uh so to have her come and say that it kind of makes me think do I really even want it to work now with everything that's happened between us? And like you always say, to get to relationship 2.0, I need to, um, we need to definitely get there because if we stay where we're at, there's no way we'll just go back to the same issues that we've had. So, um, thank you for sharing that. And I was just, as you were speaking, and I know I could really resonate with the kind of, whew, like, where, where is my grounding at this exact moment? And you have the most amazing, it's just like love that emanates out of your eyes. And so I have to think that wherever you are choosing to go right now, whether it's turning, course correcting with her or moving into a different lifestyle you ha you have this incredible presence that you give to people and no wonder um no wonder your your wife is not wanting to lose that so thank you for what you do and who you are thank you i appreciate that yeah so rob let me ask you is there a reason for you to change course with moving out right this moment um, I still do want to um, make it work between us. And so I guess my question is, is I'm planning to move out in the next uh, two weeks. Um, how should I react to her saying that? And should I still move out even though she said that and she probably still wants me to move out? And I know that probably a test when she says that or jokes about that I know it's definitely a test to see how grounded I am and see if I am actually <laughs> changed from from all the work yeah I mean there's there's what I could recommend and then there's what I want to draw out of you what you want Rob right so from this work that you've right. been doing you've been on your path you've been kicking ass and now that's what she's interested in right and so you're on your adventure and part of your adventure is moving out. And so she doesn't want to lose all of you. Um, by the way, she didn't say, Hey, I'd like you to not move out. 
I'd like us to work on the relationship. I'd like us to go to marriage counseling. She didn't say those things, right? No, we, we did uh, marriage counseling from March to uh, July, and then she didn't want to do it anymore after that. Yeah, okay. That makes sense. That's kind of that's kind of normal. Like I've been through yeah. that. And a lot of guys have gone through that too. Um, so do you, if you just want it straight from me, don't don't change your plans. I mean, keep moving out, right? Like right. This, this is the path that you've been on for a long time. You feel strong in that path. If you were to change that right now over this, maybe we could. Ha ha! I'm half making a joke. Like that. Right. That seems like not a great reason for you to change your whole life plan right now. Um, that does not preclude you from dating her though, right? If you wanted to start right. version 2.0, you could always do that dating her from where you're moving to now, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So what's, what's the fear? Is the fear that if you move out that somehow she'll then close the door on you again, you know, even though like you get to control what goes on here, Rob, right? You get to control right. what you want from your life. You get to control if you want to date her or not, by the way. Like it, you even said, you're not even sure if you want to date her. So what do you want? Like, let's just pause on what she said for a second. What, you know, your, your separated spouse said for a second and think about what Cynthia was saying, which is you're an amazing man with heart and connection and you draw, you're going to draw people in and you're on your own path now, like Cynthia said. So what do you want for yourself? Yeah. And I think next week it'll be a good check and of what I want because she She's going away with her sister, um, so it'll probably be a good no contact week next week, and so I can really get deep into what I want. And I think really at this point, I do want to move out and get my life started. And if she wants to join me, then that's fine. But if not, then I'll be okay um, either way because. It's just, it's been so much between us and when, with me doing this work then, and me creating my boundaries and creating my nuts, then I, I'm seeing things that I would have never tolerated before that was happening. And so I, I'm not even sure if, if she'd be okay with me starting to create boundaries. She wouldn't even oh. know who I, I was anymore. Yeah, that's really it's, been, it's been so long since I've been authentically myself and creating boundaries that I don't even, <laughs> it would be so different. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So she hasn't even really fully experienced the new you, it sounds like. No, not, yeah. not, uh, not entirely. Yeah, yeah, okay. Well, I mean, you know, if this were a coaching call, Rob, and we had an hour, we would definitely get into, okay, what would be a boundary that you would start to uphold immediately, right? If you were dating her fresh, how would you go about that? Okay, because you have the chance here to start dating her, and by the way, dating other women. I mean, I've shared in the show, Cynthia and I have talked about extensively how when my ex and I split up, I took time to do my men's work without, without dating anyone. And then I started dating other women and my ex was reattracted during the time I was dating other women. And I dated my ex and some other women at the same time. You know, my boundary was I wasn't sleeping with any of them. We were going out or maybe kissing and that was my line. Okay. But I dated my ex while I dated other women. Okay. <laughs> this, is before, right. this is before I met Cynthia, obviously. Right. <laughs> Cynthia's over here like let me let me count the timeline here Jeff how's this timeline working no no bullshit I was dating my ex with other women as well and that's an opportunity for you too if you want if that's part of what you want to do and experience life you don't have to sleep with any you know whatever your values are Rob right but I would definitely not change the plan now off of what she said and and I'd love for Cynthia to jump in and give some feedback on Women want to maintain tribe, as you've said. She sees Rob on this new path. He's kicking ass in life. She doesn't really know who this new man that he is. She's curious about him now, right? So why would a woman say, well, there's always a chance. And if you com fully commit, which whatever that means, right? Because right. <laughs> there is no certainty in life. So when, someone, when a woman gives you the like, well, if you do this certain thing, but there's no certainty in life. So that's, you just got to watch out for that guys, right? So why would a woman say what she's saying now with the situation? Oh, well, 
So I like what Jason posted. He said, being sure about something like committing to the relationship is over feels a lot safer than trusting that something that may be. And what I wanted to tie into that is, Rob, like your your strength of commitment to, okay, I'm going to move out and like your vision and your momentum and your frame around that, um, I bet felt really amazing to, to your wife. Like she felt the, the, the purpose and the mission in you and, and the commitment to what you had chosen to do. And so that was, attractive to her. And I mean, I do know like as a woman that when we feel a man's commitment to his mission, his purpose, it also feels amazing when that same kind of strength is faced in our direction. Um, And at the same time, it sounds like she's kind of like testing you like, well, you know, as long as this happens, then, then we'll be good. So what I love Jeff saying is like, if you, if you moving out, keeping with your commitment, keeping that strength and that power, and then saying to her, Hey, I'd like, I would like to date you. I'd like to look at maybe starting version 2.0 of our relationship. Um, but that, it, that it is on your terms, not because well, from a woman's perspective, because you're maintaining that strength of yourself and that mission and purpose, and that is attractive and builds safety and builds trust, um, no matter if that's for your wife or if that's for another woman. Yeah, Rob. So here's, here's your homework is I would frame this as I'm moving out and I would like to do this with you. I would like to date you. I would like to take you out on one. I would like to take you out on a first date. So it's an, it's an, and I'm continuing this and I love what you said. You can tell her, I love what you said. And this is how it made me feel. It made me feel inspired to see if we have something new for it. For right. Instance, right. So share a, a bit of your truth there and then lead, invite her on a date. I'd like to take you out on a first date, you know, or another first date, or let's try, you know, <laughs> how, how you want to frame it, Rob. Right. So it can be positive and positive. It doesn't have to be, Oh no, I'm not going to X, Y, Z. It can be positive And I want to take you out on a first date. Right? So that's, that's okay. homework is to practice that for your own self, write it out, talk it into your phone, just kind of start spitting some stuff out. Um, you're not trying to sell her, right? It's two or three sentences. Like we talk about <laughs> It's two or three sentences. Right. And then you're offering, you're proposing, Hey, after next week, uh, and I'm moving out. Once I get settled into my place, I'd love to take you out on a first date the first week in August or the first weekend in August. Or, you know, maybe propose where you'd go. Like, I'd love to take you to this waterfall that's 30 minutes outside of town. How does that sound? Right? Right. Does that sound like a plan, Rob? Yeah, that does. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Do you have any concerns? Is there anything left? It seems like that helped you settle and gives you a plan. Is there anything else that's in the back of your mind right now that you want to put on the table or share with the guys? Um, I think, I think that's it. It's just, uh, like just trying to stay true to what I want and not make sure that I change my course just for one, maybe right. thing that comes up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sounds like you, it sounds like you got it, man. And, and we never do, this work for a particular outcome. I mean, we, uh, most men come to this work because we're trying to save our marriage. And like a man, in the forum said, we come to this work to save our marriage, but we end up saving ourselves. And that's what it feels like that you've done, Rob, is you've saved yourself. And now you don't want to just fall back into old habits. So don't right. Move out, keep doing your daily work, write down what values you want and take it slow. That's a big theme. That's something I talked about this morning. Even Rob is that slow is so much better than trying to rush. So take it slow. Right. Great. Thanks, guys. Yeah, man. Thank you. I appreciate it. Hey, Ruben, I saw you had your hand up, buddy. I uh, didn't mean to shove you off, but did you want to come in and say something? Looks like you put your hand down. Did you want to come in? No, I was just, I've been talking to Rob, and I, when the way you guys finished it was awesome. Um, he's, he's being his own man, and 
kind of she's given him kind of the rules, and it's awesome that he can provide his own rules to what he wants. To do. So it's not, you know, going into her world and then being accepted by her. So I thought it was awesome. Yeah, very cool. Thanks, Driven. Yeah, what are our own rules for ourselves, right? So if if we're not honoring our own self, that's that's part of our theme of this week. Is if if we're not honoring our own self, then that's where we need to start. Let me jump back up here to our theme of this week of how and when to ask for more affection. Well, when is when we have our own rules. So asking is the third phase of coaching. I don't have my I don't have my little sheet up here. I need to bring those up. But it's stop bro ask right and so we're assuming as we mentioned on friday that you've been working through the stop phase and the grow phase and this is the ask phase which you must be detached from outcome you must not have anger or resentment or or um, feelings of jealousy if you're going to be asking for anything and a lot of times she comes to you you create the healthy space the healthy vacuum and you're kicking ass in your own life and she comes to you and that is when you set the framework of your own life, your own values. That's when you ask for what you want. And Rob is asking, he's going to ask for a first date. That's super exciting. Yeah. yeah. Did you want to add anything on there as far as from a woman's point of view or honestly? So if Rob says, Hey, I'm moving out and I'm excited about what you said, I'd like to invite you on a first date. What's something that he needs to be aware of in her reaction to that question? I like to, of course, let men know about potential pitfalls or possibilities upcoming here. What might he see one way or the other, would you think, in her response? Mm. Well, so the first, like, first blush, the energy of, like, and, and I want to take you out on a first date, and, you know, you being excited about that, or, or you, Rob, being excited about that is, um, it just made me smile from ear to ear, because it's just like, oh, that sounds amazing. And um, it could be, Rob, that, you know, even though your wife was kind of testing you a little, like, oh, maybe it could work out that um, there is some vulnerability in that, in, in, in an ask of you, and maybe she could have been kind of covering it up with, um, you know, I'm still holding the reins, but beneath, beneath that is kind of a soft, tender part of me saying, who really are you going? So it could be that if you say I am moving out and I'm doing this, there could be like that um, kind of like grip in her heart of, um, of pain of the reality that you are, you are leaving the home. And I know when I get that grip in my heart, I do more of the like shut down and I know other women can kind of snap back. So that's, um, and regardless if either one of those happen, I'm sure you will, you know, handle that again with your incredible energy and then keep that forward momentum of, okay, like in August, I want to, you know, take you to this waterfall and I, and I, you know, want to date you. Yeah. So <clears throat> I'll add on to that, that when you ask her, give her time days even to respond to you because she might have the, oh, you're he's still moving out and the closing down or some other defense mechanism. And if you handle it cool and you don't, you know, punish her basically for her response, she might think about it for a few days and then settle into it and want that. Okay. But if you punish her right away, then she's just going to feel chastised and shamed. And then definitely it's not going to go the way you want, right? Or it's not even going to have the possibility of a first date again. So that's something to consider guys is Cynthia talks a lot about a woman's shield and her, you know, her masculine shield and her armor that she puts up to try to move into the world without your masculinity. And if she opens herself up, she can feel really vulnerable. This, <laughs> this happened a lot over this past week when Cynthia and I were doing couples work together. Like, of course, we do work all the time and opening up our heart does make us vulnerable to past hurts as well as family system pattern stuff from our childhood. And so giving each other time to allow us to have little triggered reactions and not taking out, take it out on one another. And then we can come back either an hour later or a day later and connect in the way that we want to. That happens at least two or three times, <laughs> at least two or three times over this past week. I'll save one of those stories. <laughs> I'll save one of those stories on the, 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 the goddess recording on the trip home yesterday was interesting <laughs> or Saturday, Saturday on the trip home. I'll save that. 
I'll save that for another time. So I've got a video that plays right into this about, you know, are we chasing someone or are we standing up for what we want and how to tell the difference? This is by Mark Groves. It's entitled, I'm stuck chasing again. And I curated the exact spot here. So here's two minutes from Mark Groves. And gentlemen, I'd love for you to post in the chat like always if you like or chat with each other or to raise your hand if you have a question on this particular uh, topic. And we're gonna be getting into the whole week, this whole week, when and how to ask for more affection from your spouse or separated spouse. But here's two minutes from Mark Groves right now. And when we're in the middle of it, which is human, it's like, how do we break this? How do we get out of it? But listen, if you chase someone that doesn't want you or a relationship, you're gonna be sad. So how do you break that? Well, you break it by not doing it. You break it by doing the inner work that says, why am I actually chasing these people? What is the deeper part of me that believes this is what, how you fucking get to be in my life? I'm actually giving a space for someone in my life who doesn't fucking show up for me. like. If that's not a mind fuck, then what is? And when you actually pay attention to the truth of what you're choosing, they're not choosing you, you're choosing them. And that means that you can change it. Well, that's incredibly empowering. But what happens in that empowerment is also responsibility, which says, I'm choosing these people who don't even want a relationship, who don't even want me. That's so painful. That is so painful and my heart breaks for you because I know what that's like, I've done it. You know, so I would instead meet the part of you who's likely a child I would meet that part of you and I would say, we're done with this. You are so worthy of being loved. You're so worthy of being chosen. And I'm sorry that I haven't as the adult shown up for us. I'm sorry that we didn't get shown up for as a kid. And I'm ready to step into a more empowered future and to choose somebody who can choose us. And I've got our own back. No longer will I let the wounded child drive the car. Because that's essentially what's happening, is the little kid who desperately wanted to be loved, who desperately wanted to be chosen and noticed, is saying, I'm gonna keep letting my pain lead my life. And I'm gonna keep looking for someone to finally give me what I've never gotten. And so when you actually step up and do that, you heal so much, but it takes a courageous leap to be an adult. And I know that to be true. <laughs> yeah, Andy in the chat said that this guy's awesome. Mark Groves is awesome. awesome. We love curating this stuff for you guys. Uh, what he did there, how he spoke to his own child, is a piece of what you all know who's, who've been on the show is a piece of the boardroom exercise that we've shared in the show, especially in the, so we're in the 13th week of our show. The boardroom was the second month. Uh, definitely I can talk about that another day. That's a whole other exercise. That's, that's number eight in our Morning Kingly plan. It's a more advanced exercise. It has to deal with parts theory and family systems triangulations and the parts of ourself that we've shoved down, we've sent to the basement and tried to like cut out of ourselves, even though you can't, you can't leave your anger behind. I tried that, right? You can't, you can't shove the Hulk into the basement. He's just going to go lift weights and be angry when he comes back out. He's, he's green and at least he has underwear on. I don't know how the Hulk always has shorts on. Like he doesn't just bust out of those things. But um, <laughs> yeah, Mark Groves is talking about honoring our, ourselves and what a mind fuck it is to give someone time in our life that doesn't want to be with us. Right? How did that, how did that hit you when Mark was talking about that in relation to Rob in relation to the, the courage and the vulnerability that it took him to even have that conversation with his, you know, spouse, his ex at this point. And wh why do we give people time in our lives that don't want to be with us, right? There's circumstances, there's children, there's family, like we both both definitely understand that. But from a family systems point of view or from a wounded child, like Mark Groves was talking, why do we do that? Oh, <laughs> I, mean, I think it's pretty easy to repeat patterns that we've seen before in, you know, how we grew up. I, I do happen to think there's also an element that, um, very soulful men and women, men like you who are very in tune and um, pay attention and you know stand for honor. 
I think we often can feel in the other, another person, you know, their best selves. And so we can kind of walk around going, well, if I was just this, or if I just went this way or acted this way, I could, you know, evoke that part out of them. And, um, and there's also the very human need to be wanted, desired, valued, feel like we, um, we matter and make a difference in someone else's life. So there's the pursuit of that. And I think there's the, the spiritual why of, um, we do see the good in people and, um, deep inside of us are asking that to come out. However, I have felt the most healing impact on others and myself has been to, to say, I'm, I am worth someone who wants to give me the same energy back that I'm giving them. And that's even been in the, in the, the same kind of relationship where that's changed the course of the relationship or where actually I, I have moved on to a different relationship because I was finally willing to draw my line in the sand um, and ask for that in return. So yeah, so in relation to the three forms of competence, right, that's the spiritual mindset of that I'm worthy of someone giving me back what I want to give. Not that it's brownie points or you're comparing, but I want someone that wants to be in relationship to the level that I do. That's the mindset, right? So as far as the skills, the behavioral skills of what to do right now, so if she's wounded, if the woman is wounded, if we haven't been the leader that we want to be, if we haven't been giving her hope and giving her the other pieces of the woman's pie, like you teach, Cynthia, of how to give the, the woman the pieces of the pie, the relationship pie that she's wanting, if we haven't been doing that, then we don't really have the right in this moment to try to enforce that. I mean, we certainly can't force her to want us. Right? We can have we can grow our mindset of I want to be in relationship with someone who wants to be at the level as I do mm -hmm. while I'm having patience behaviorally. Mm -hmm. So I want to differentiate those uh, that we're growing our mindset. That's the grow phase is our skills and our mindset without trying to force her to do anything without behaviorally shaming her for not being in a relationship at the level that we are. Right. Let's, that's why we piece the three pieces of confidence, the three forms of confidence apart. So, Cindy, if you'd honor our chat, I'd appreciate it, yeah. Uh, so, John said, my wife told me yesterday that she has zero feelings for me, but doesn't want to rush into divorce. Um, what can one ask for her in, what, for in this situation? What's one ask? She's hurting for reasons beyond the marriage and said she needs to fix herself first before thinking about us. I'm kind of lost. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, so kind of asking for how to make an ask when someone is at the level of level of zero, when they say they have level, I have level zero feelings. Yes. So, so John, I would ask, have you ever had a conversation with her differentiating her and you and the relationship, the third entity of the relationship and what's best for the relationship, right? So when she says she doesn't want to rush into divorce, that can mean different things. But she's hurting for reasons outside of the third entity of your relationship. Okay. So I'm wondering if in any instance she's able to talk about those other pains separate from the relationship itself between the two of you. And if she can, if she can differentiate those things, that's the basis for doing things for the relationship, even if she's not in a great space overall, or for you to understand that she has these pains. So it sounds like you're aware of it, but that would be one question is if she's even wanting or able to talk about the third entity between the two of you, the relationship between the two of you separate from those outside pains. Right? And then what you are willing to do as far as timeline and boundaries and the other factors in your life of wanting to still be in a relationship where she has zero feelings for you. Like those are the opening questions that I would have. Yeah, please. What else is in the chat? Um, well, and I do want to say that I, I, as a the feminine being, is never at zero of anything unless she's in completely burned out, overwhelmed, um, flooded. So I wouldn't take the I have zero feelings actually as 
truth. It's more of a right now. Yeah. Just she's it's so hard for her to connect into the flow and the, of her like femininity that she just, um, she, if she feels like she's kind of in a living in a house with concrete walls and nothing else, um, and to get outside of the house is to be like, Oh, this is how I'm feeling about this. And this is how mm-hmm. my experience is. Um, uh, so Jason said in re- reference to John, I would think the loudest part of her experience is not about you. That it's just another part that she doesn't feel she has strength in, in this moment. Um, And Jason went on to say the gift of the masculine in this moment is to provide a perspective of compartmentalization. (laughs) Jason and I are on the same (laughs) wavelength. Yeah, perspective of compartmentalization. So, for instance, I might say something like, and and again, this is just from what we've seen in the chat, right? Everyone has deeper, more complex situations, and John does as well. But I would say, baby, I see you're in so much pain over here. Let's do this for us to a level of the intimacy staircase that she's able to accept and receive right now. So if she, if her bottom drawer emotions are closed down because of all this pain, right? What is she able to receive and accept even in this moment within the relationship? Right. And so what if she is completely overwhelmed and burned out from everything else in life? And so she feels, she does feel like there is zero. What can be a way for, for him to water the garden of their relationship a little bit, you know, something more than zero. Uh, I think it's continuing to provide little elements of compartmentalization, that it's not the whole flood that everything is distraught because sure it does feel that way. Um, because when there's little compartments around distraught feelings, you as a woman start to feel a little bit more safe and like you have a little bit more juice to handle what's being um, given to you. Um, And also like you give this to me, provide like patience that it's okay that something takes some time um, for me to breathe through or move through. And that's, that's huge. Um, Where it's, you know, it's not about you, you know, it's not about you and you give me space and yet it's not like, oh, hands off, like, well, figure out your shit because that's, that feels very isolating and um, um, dismissive. So. Yeah, thank you. So when you were saying that, I was picturing, like, if you're falling in, if if you're sinking into quicksand, I can make the choice to throw you the rope, throw you a rope, and you, you have to want to talk about it right then. Mm-hmm. Okay? But if I try to rip you out of the quicksand too fast, I either pull the rope out of your hands or I, it burns your hands. And that's not helping the situation at all. Mm-hmm. So she, you know, you have the choice to grab onto the rope. But to your point, I'm not just walking away mm-hmm. and, and abandon. Because a woman sees that as abandoning, guys, by the way. If, if we treat her like a man... We give her space and walk away where a man just might want space. But to her, that's an abandonment, right? So you have to throw the rope. She doesn't have to try to take it. She doesn't have to take it. And throwing the rope doesn't mean that you shame her. You don't go overboard. Throwing the rope is what's appropriate in this moment. Like, hey, it seems like something's, something you know, is up. What's going on? Or, hey, you seem kind of sad. Would you like to talk about it? Or I'm here for you if you'd like to talk. It seems like you're being really quiet about something. I'm here. Those are all ways to throw a rope to her. And then when she answers, if she says, yeah, you hurt, (laughs) like this happened, we shared this on the show last week. Yeah, you hurt my feelings when you didn't ask me the question in response. So now I could think, oh, I'm such a failure as a man. And well, she could have just told me and blame and all these other things. So I have to, (laughs) I have to not either then drop the rope and walk away and blame, right? or not try to pull her out really fast. And it's, so you guys see the metaphor here, right? You have to throw the rope. She can take it if she wants. And then you're slowly helping her compartmentalize, slowly helping her step out of the quicksand of feeling like it's a flood of everything and bringing her into your arms within the metaphor of, Hey, let's do this one small thing together. That's appropriate within the stairs of intimacy. 
She's smiling. That's a good thing. <laughs> I guess that's a good thing. Yeah. If you do me a favor and honor the chat, and we're coming close to the end of our show. Yeah. Today. Well, the we have two Jasons on today, and the other Jason said, "Sorry, the chat bar jumped up again." My wife has said it said done and says she didn't see a chance to save the marriage after a month or so i found this group and decided to adopt the guy adopt the guidance 100 percent. and after four months of zero fighting and little communication she has the space to start moving back toward me not sure how much space you guys have but maybe creating some helps her identify that her conflicts are more internal than with the marriage my wife also has had many traumas and stresses outside the marriage and our space helped her realize that her pain and her feelings of being overwhelmed largely came from those internal conflicts yeah, so again, the dance is offering space without abandoning, right? And so that's, it's a dance. It's, there is no perfect answer any one day. It's a dance. You work the edge of that. And if, she, if she's asking for more space, if she's backing away, if when you talk about something, she, she's not interested, that's okay. You tried throwing the rope and she didn't take it. That's fine. Maybe next time you take a half step back, and throw, you know, throw a smaller rope, like don't try so hard. This isn't about trying harder. It's about allowing the time to be while you grow your depth as a man, guys, okay? So you're not just doing nothing. If she doesn't wanna be involved with you, you're growing your strength and your depth. Like Rob said, working out, reading books, meeting friends, being in your career, hugging your kids, doing the best you can with all those other pieces of your life, if, even if she's not, feeling connected with you right now. Is there anything else that you wanted to mention or let's go ahead and honor our men, Cynthia, and close out the show for today. Oh, well, um, John said, thank you for your perspective. Um, hundred percent fidelity to the guidance I'm receiving. Andy says this topic hits home. My wife has a lot of trauma has been coming out into, and that's been coming out into our relationship. Um, gosh, I just thank you all for your, um, compassion. Thank you for your compassion. I would say that, uh, you know, even the, the woman, the woman who is doing her own work can still get really, really flooded by things. And to have, to have gentlemen, to have the masculine energy, be willing to reach out, um, and offer connection is please know what good it does. Um, even if in the moment it feels like it has zero effect, even if it seems like this doesn't equal, she wants to hold my hand, even if it feels like, yeah, I've been doing that for a year and there's no impact, it does, it makes a difference. So thank you so much. I agree completely. Thank you, Cynthia. <laughs> yeah. Cynthia, you can honor yeah. that. Thank you. We, well, we had Jason on the call. I know he had to jump off and Joseph was here. Tim, it's, I just so appreciate having seen your face every day. And Rob, thank you for sharing. Ruben, thank you for the grunting. It really <laughs> makes the difference. Randy, thank you for being here. Patrick, Chris, it was so good to see you. John, thank you for sharing. And Jason, thank you for sharing your story. Ian and Harry, Dave, Brett is here. Andy, Andy Malloy is here. Thank you all. And I'm hoping you have a wonderful rest of your Monday. You guys are fantastic. This has been the C-Note Show brought to you by Great Men Move Mountains and greatmenmovemountains.com. We're here every Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. Mountain Time. You can call in live. Check out the link. It's the same every single day by going to our website, greatmenmovemountains.com slash C-Note. Or if you're curious about our private one-on-one -on -one coaching, if you don't want to necessarily talk over a forum like this, if you want to have one-on-one -on -one and we dive deep, deep, deep into your specific situation to give you the exact tools, perspective, plan of action, and mindsets to give you the mindsets for the next 40, 50 years of your life, whether it's with your spouse or with the next woman in your life, we're going to teach you exactly how to do that as fast as possible, save you time and money, super powerful. Go to greatmenmovemountains.com slash contact. Well, thank you guys for being here. We'll see you tomorrow, 11 a.m. Mountain. Bye. Ciao.
I'ma think about a woman who's cold as tundra with some frozen eyes. I can tell by the way she moves that she cares and it's lovely.